Hello, everyone, and welcome to the presentation for the Northside Community Recreation Center and Park, also known as the Grub YMCA. Uh, this is a presentation from the public meeting uh, number four that happened on January 20th, um, and I'll share the presentation, walk through the presentation and some of the handouts and discussion shared at that meeting. My name is Catherine Darnstadt. I am the founder of Layton Design, an architecture and urban design firm based in Chicago, working with the fantastic uh, design team of MA Architecture, Genus Landscape, and many others um, on this particular project. Um, what I would like to do tonight is go through, um, walk you through what we shared as part of that meeting. Um, uh, throughout, I'll try and intersperse some of the comments that we heard from the community as we were um, answering questions and, and clarifying different ideas in the discussion that was shared. And hopefully that'll help um, frame, help you understand and frame um, how that meeting went. Uh, on the website where you also got to this presentation and video, you'll also be able to download the handouts that were shared at the meeting, um, as well as a link to the survey to provide any comments um, or questions or opinions that you have about the different design strategies that were shared. Um, on the screen right now, you see the brief agenda that we had for the meeting. We started um, with a welcome and a community reflection from Leisha Barkas of the YMCA to share a little bit of her, um, her thanks uh, for and just, you know, real, um, just real pride that she had in the Y and also in the community for um, building building the space and making it what it is today. We shared a little bit next uh, about the meeting and process uh, and any updates that we shared um, from the last meeting, as well as discuss, then got into the meat of the presentation, which was discussing four unique uh, design strategies for discussion. Two of them were looking at renovation of the existing YMCA, and two of them were looking at new construction, um, community facility buildings, community recreation center buildings, um, both with and without pools. So that was the, the, a big chunk of the meeting was walking through these four strategies and then having small group discussions after each strategy was presented. We regrouped together as a whole and had a large group discussion that went a little long, but it was great to hear all the comments. Um, we discussed then um, what worked about some ideas, what didn't work, what direction can the community give us in order to move forward with um, refining um, two ideas or three ideas and uh, as we get to the next meeting. And then we closed out and shared um, what to, what we were planning for next. As always, this is, is guided um, with the main vision of serving community needs and providing opportunities for a world-class facility, a recreation community facility through a vibrant design. And that's uh, brought forth with the goal that this planning process reflects a collective vision of the community. That's why we have these meetings. That's why we take the time for the discussions. That's why we make the forms as open and accessible as we can, um, because we want a planning process that is engaging, inclusive, equitable, and just. The guiding principles that we look at and we, we have at every meeting is you know, having very frank, open and honest discussions and being courteous and respectful of each other's time and, and perspectives that they're bringing to this process. Um, and we want to continue to be very clear and specific and direct so that it's understandable what we're doing as a design team, what the city is also planning and what the community should ex anticipate and while they can have continue to provide input and continue to provide accountability in the project moving forward. Right now um, at the last meeting, if you were at meeting three, um, we did see a lot of uh, familiar faces at meeting four. We did share this timeline um, at the last meeting and it is available for download as well. Um, but we are more than halfway through 
this planning process, um, public meeting four, where we're going, I'm going to present um, different design, preliminary design strategies and um, discuss. We are moving forward then from this meeting, carrying forward, we'll take this direction and feedback and provide uh, draft recommendations at public meeting five in February, February 17th, and then close with an open house um, in March, March 24th to present final design recommendations and share the process and the feedback to date. That leads into the next phase of fundraising, which goes from this year into next, with the goal that design and construction commences in 2023, with the goal of opening a new facility or renovated grub in 2025. The two goals of the meeting, um, uh, the meeting we had were to share study process progress, excuse me, and discuss four planning strategies. So we walked in detail through four planning strategies in order to build consensus around a short list of, of strategies that we want to continue to pursue as a design team. And also as our larger consultant team, our consultant team includes um, individuals that uh, understand facilities operation and construction, individuals that understand carbon footprints and can evaluate uh, the differences between retaining a new building um, or building a new one, and also an amazing uh, landscape architecture and design team that's looking at the whole site and kind of creating this amazing uh, uh, feel of what um, the outdoor play activity space can be. Some updates from the last meeting we had um, in November, some new consensus items that we've learned, which um, bring a lot of good news. Um, what we heard from the meetings is that if a new building is pursued, the preferred location is at the corner of Ninth and College. This came to the forefront, not only because of visibility um, it, from the community, but then also um, how it is close to access points from a bus stop and walking distance and considering how people might access the site. This also um, allows for the west side of the site to have a big wide open field for different types of programming elements. So there's more outdoor, more contiguous outdoor space that could be programmed. If there's, um, we do know that if we pr pursue a new building option, um, the city will move forward to acquire that one parcel at Ninth and College that they don't own to be able to complete that vision. However, if a renovation is pursued, the design team did look at um, that option um, and will present two strategies regarding renovation options. We do know that the budget might not allow any uh, any additions to the existing building. Um, so we did not pursue an option that has a building addition. We know it will just be utilizing the funding uh, for the existing building renovation. The great news is that the $12 million um, available funding would go all towards the construction budget. Uh, it would not have to um, go towards project uh, budget soft costs, meaning design fees, contingencies, things like that. So that's great news to be able to allocate more of the budget directly to construction or renovation costs. And park amenities, we talked a lot in previous meetings about what's happening on the site, what's happening outdoors, what kind of programs or activities um, are possible. Those will be discussed in more detail at the next public meeting. Um, we wanted to focus meeting number four on the building and then meeting number five will be both um, the revised building designs and then also talking about the site and the site possibilities there. What we were also able to do over since the last meeting um, were then to take all review all of the material, the comments, the different background um, documents we receive from the Y outlining their different programs and all the number of attendees that came to it. We counted up every, you know, sticky dot that you that were put on the boards and every survey that has come in. And we were able to start to understand what are the current programs and activities that are happening in the grub and then what are the preferred new programs to happen in a the next 
uh, phase of the facility. And from there, we were able to determine six main thematic categories that we could divide these, um, place these uh, uh, kind of preferences in. And I'll walk through those uh, briefly here. We saw the first category on the left, the sports category. This was related to the specific sports style fields or activities that uh, might be needed. So from a gymnasium to a basketball court, is that a full court, a half court, NBA court, NCAA court, uh, or like high school court, um, soccer fields, what size, is that indoor, is that outdoor, uh, baseball, handball, futsal, so futsal, courts, um, we heard a lot of different um, sports activities, and then those have very specific sizes of courts or fields that are associated with them. From the fitness category, the next one, we know weight room, uh, walking track, those are already within the space, the existing grub itself, but how do we incorporate, you know, flexible studios and for yoga or other types of classes, um, have a different type of cardio or spe specifically a cycling studio? And how do we think about both passive and active open space? So what does fitness look like inside the building and what could fitness activities or stations look like on the site? In the middle, the, the blue, op the light blue option were all the different community spaces or activities that we heard. And remember, we categorize these um, based on the type of space, you know, the specific type of room or footprint that it would contain. Um, we didn't list, we didn't, aren't showing every single event that might happen within the room. So we have a, we might plan for a multi-purpose room, but we're not going to list um, right now the 30 different events that could happen in there, which could be from a birthday party to a book drive. You know, they both might happen in a type of multi-purpose room. Um, so how do we, how can we start to prioritize that type of room in our planning process? We also heard, you know, a catering kitchens, a commercial kitchen at that scale so people could rent it out and use or for a business or also um, use for an event within the space. And then classrooms, meeting rooms, new things we heard were about shelters um, for the outdoor spaces, both enclosed and open, and then having different types of event spaces, both inside the building as well as outside the building for cultural activities and programming. The dark blue category is all related to the pool and aquatic. So we know a pool, the facility currently has a pool and we also looked at options of what would a new building look like if it had a pool. Um, we also started to incorporate in here about spray pads or other type of outdoor um, uh, you know, play area activities, water-based play area activities. Then the pink category is the theme of, you know, outside the box. This is, these are items and program that currently don't, um, might not exist in their full capacity at the current grub. And, and so how can we make space for a daycare, for more computer rooms, art studios, um, you know, entrepreneurship or incubator tech spaces, and then also, you know, concessions both in the building or outdoors in maybe combined with uh, an enclosed shelter? And how can we introduce new types of sport and fit fitness programming like rock climbing? The last category, which is the gray, is all the support programming, the back of house, you know, your restrooms, your locker rooms, your office, even your parking that you have to consider um, in when you're designing and renovating um, space and thinking about these design strategies that we'll present. The color coding, um, you'll see reference throughout the remainder of the presentation and then also through subsequent presentations to be able to quickly start to visually identify what the categories are, um, what type of programming this is, and then how much, how much and where is it allocated within a building or a site. We then, now we knew how much, you know, how big we could make something. Now we started to think about how much would it be to um, create some of these um, um, strategies? So we looked at more than we're going to present uh, today. Uh, we looked at um, both renovation strategies and then new construction strategies. The top line, the four are new, our renovation strategies, excuse me, 
and the bottom five were new construction strategies. The four that are highlighted um, with the green box, those are the four that we walk through in more detail, um, which I'll get to uh, later on uh, in a couple of slides. Um, but first, what I wanted to explain is all of these pie charts are pie charts based on the potential, the, the how much space or how much building could we renovate on the top row or build new construction in the bottom row based on a $12 million construction budget. Um, so the first row we looked at um, renovating um, the existing building, one option of prioritizing more finish upgrades and um, you know room changes to the existing building and minimizing the renovations to the pool. Another option we looked at more minimal building renovations and more substantial pool renovation options. And the price, the percentage of how much those would cost impacts the area um, that could be renovated, but also impacts the level of upgrades that might be possible within those spaces. And again, I'll walk through those in more detail in a couple slides. The bottom row, um, we walked through a variety of new construction options. Uh, so we looked at new construction, the first one on the left, um, without a pool. So the maximum new construction building, you know, the approximate size you could create would be about 21,500 square feet. The next option to its right when adding a pool to that, um, that design strategy that um, allowed for, you know, now we have an indoor pool, but then it has a little bit less square footage in terms of community programming and spaces, so about 14,000 square feet. We also heard at previous meetings the desire to have an indoor turf field. Um, and, and when we started to study that strategy of an indoor turf field, we found that for the available budget, uh, the turf field uh, would just eat up the majority of the budget um, due to its size, um, leaving about only 2,400 square feet of additional uh, community programming space remaining. So essentially that building would be all turf field and minimal uh, community rooms available. So we decided not to pursue that one any further. The um, remaining um, pie charts on the right with the yellow parts. Those are talking about different site strategies, outdoor site strategies options, which as mentioned before, we'll talk about in more detail at meeting five. Um, but now I wanted to um, then share um, a little bit more about, well, now we know how big, we know how much, and now we want to talk about the program of like where it's located and what specifically is it. So here we're showing um, a square footage breakdown of the four different strategies that we are going to talk about in more detail. Uh, the two on the left um, are the renovation options. The two on the right, those columns and with the black box, those are the new construction options. And what you're seeing here are these series of different color coded boxes, which correspond to the previous slide that had all the different um, Room, the different programming rooms uh, called out. This is how that starts to look when you lay it out based on the size of the room and the area in proportion to each other. Um, so the two on the left, as I mentioned, these are the renovation options. Um, I'll talk through them briefly because again, we're going to go through um, each of them in more detail. Uh, the two renovation options um, we're starting with the top line that shows the existing area of pool and mechanical space that is currently in the grub Y. The green row below that is showing the existing gym and the size of the gym and the square footage. The yellow line below that is showing the existing weight room, cardio, aerobics room, and the track that, it, that are in the space, followed by the light blue line below that it are the community rooms that are in the space. So here you see there's a little bit of a difference between how strategy one renovation looks like versus strategy two renovation um, in these program diagrams. The difference between the two is that in strategy one, 
we are prioritizing the reconfiguration of these rooms and spaces uh, so that you, there is the potential to bring in new program um, into the facility and have the rooms correspond to that. So for there might the community rooms on strategy one, those start to turn into the row below the pink option, which is like new childcare and play spaces, new health and social services rooms, you know, maybe a renovated teen space. Um, those become new building options. Whereas in strategy two, the community rooms stay exactly the same size and shape and, you know, footprint that they are, where they're located within the building, as well as the teen space that is um, adjacent to the basketball court. Finally, the gray rows below that show the existing kind of what we call support spaces or back of house. You know, that's your lobby, your restroom, your locker room, offices and storage. And then the final row shows the mechanical and then the circulation space. Um, within the building. So that's your hallways um, within the building. What I do want you to note is that what's unique to the Grub uh, facility currently is that there is almost 6,600 square feet of circulation within the space. So that big bar is that you see at the bottom, that's the, you know, that's as big as the pool. <laughs> right. So just thinking about how all those hallways um, kind of come together. And I think that helped that started to contribute to what people in previous meetings talked about, you know, the flow of the existing building or, you know, the wayfinding of the existing building. Before I move to the new, to new construction strategies of three and four, I do want to mention that the renovation option. Um, both renovation options do assume the building is getting all new HVAC, the pool is getting new pool equipment and is working and functioning. There is a new roof and, you know, water damage is repaired. There's new lighting finishes, paint, you know, new acoustics, things like that. It's just that strategy one um, prioritizes, you know, the building um, kind of the rooms themselves and trying to reconfigure kind of more putting more of a like a gut renovation on the rooms and more of a refresh on the pool whereas strategy two looks at more of like let's try and gut renovate and refresh gut renovate the pool and kind of just refresh the rooms as is moving on to the two new construction strategies the main difference between strategy three and strategy four is that strategy three does not include a pool in the new construction option, where strategy four does include a pool in the new construction option. Where there are differences then beyond that is the second row of the uh, sport uh, row, we have a multi-purpose field or court in both buildings. It's just in strategy three, because it's a bigger building that has more community spaces within it, that court is larger. You know, you could get an NCAA or NBA basketball court. And then strategy four, the court is smaller. It's more of a high school basketball court size, which is what exists in the grub currently. Between strategy three and four, strategy three has a larger weight room or fitness area. Um, and it also has the row below that in light blue. It also has um, more community rooms and, you know, uh, uh, community spaces, um, whereas, you know, two community rooms, one commercial kitchen, and then an also a, a separate multi-purpose room, whereas strategy four just has the community room and the commercial kitchen. The pink row of the quote unquote out of the box items or the new items. Um, strategy three has more um, as childcare, computer tech, teen center, and two health and social services rooms. Whereas in strategy four, it has just the child care and one um, health social, social service room. And then finally, the two gray rows below for your support and back of house, those are substantially the same between uh, both options with maybe an option in strategy three, you know, the open office gets a little bit smaller, your lobby area might get a little bit smaller, but they're substantially the same in terms of area. Also, the other difference is with a new construction and greater efficiencies to plan out a building, 
Uh, your mechanical room might be a little bit smaller, but definitely your circulation is going to be um, much smaller than the, and much more efficient in layout than the current uh, grub facility itself. So from there, we then went into talking about uh, each strategy in much more detail, both uh, presenting in the large group and then breaking into the small groups to discuss each strategy, answer questions, um, and make sure everyone was um, on, on the same page, understood the same information, was able to ask any questions that they have, you know, about the information being shown. Did they understand, you know, the difference between gross and net square footage? Did they have ideas on what we should also be including in terms of programming? Um, again, to clarify, this was the first pass of what possibilities are. It isn't the final option by any means, and it was something to respond to and comment on. And we were hoping for great, um, comments and opinions, you know, so we could uh, shape and revi revise and refine for meeting five. We also asked, you know, what excites you about this particular building design strategy and what concerns you? Um, and we, we, we heard, we heard, um, we heard both <laughs> as we went through the different strategies. I'll start to walk through each of those four right now. Um, the first one, again, the first two strategies are renovation options. This strategy one is focused on renovating uh, the existing grub with a lot of finish upgrades and kind of room reconfigurations with um, minimal pool repairs um, um, to get it operational. Um, as mentioned previously, this both renovation options include you know, new HVAC, new ADA compliant uh, elevator and entry, new roof. Um, and, you know, we will y'all also see new lighting, new paint, new acoustics. Um, all of that will come into, um, into uh, reality as part of these renovations. Um, op this, this strategy one also prioritizes um, trying to find ways to bring more natural daylight into the building by cutting new windows and openings. Like I mentioned, reconfiguring um, some of the rooms and adjacencies to bring new program into it, but substantially the pool, the gym, and some of the um, weight and aerobic and cardio rooms, those will probably stay in the same configuration and location. Um, what you'll also see on this slide are the kind of consolidation of previous slides, whereas on the left you see a short um, narrative. In the center you see that pie chart based on the $12 million budget breakdown and large. And then on the right, you see that program and space of uh, square footage diagram with uh, square footage totals on the far right. In the bottom middle, you also do see in the green box the amount of carbon emissions that would come from a renovation versus a new construction because our um, uh, sustainability consultant did look at what's, um, uh, what, what's our car car carbon offset as part of these options. Strategy two is also a renovation. This um, prioritizes a more substantial um, state-of-the-art recreational pool and puts um, great, a greater amount of the budget towards that. And then in turn puts, you know, more minimal um, upgrades or to the remainder of the building. What that means is that the building would stay the same. Um, the rooms would stay the same size and location within the building as existing, but you would see those same finish upgrades of new mechanical, new light, new paint, um, but you might not see rooms changing size, they wouldn't change location, you wouldn't have additional windows that you would see uh, potentially in strategy one. Moving forward, we then discussed uh, the two next two new construction um, strategies. Uh, member strategy three does not have a pool and strategy four does have a pool, which is the main difference between the two of them, as well as, you know, program breakdown and overall square footage. Strategy three without a pool, um, we're seeing about a, an approximate building size of 21,500 square feet, 
with the rooms on the right broken down as, you know, a larger um, multi-purpose field and court in the building, uh, a, a slightly larger weight room and cardio room, um, you know, multiple community rooms, a commercial kitchen, and then also a multi-purpose room. Uh, we also see in that pink row various uh, new program elements such as a tech space, health and social services, childcare, and a dedicated teen center. You'll also see in the two gray rows at the bottom, um, the back of house and support spaces um, are you know, very efficient in terms of their square footage. Um, they match what's currently in the building um, in terms of entry restrooms, we're adding more restrooms, we're adding new locker rooms, an open office instead of individual office, um, office rooms, and then also new storage. But what the biggest changes you'll see is in the circulation number, where because it's a new construction building, the, that circulation, that flow, the, the length, the number of corridors, you know, that could definitely be minimized um, between a new construction option. Strategy four is um, new construction community center with a pool on this one. And so the difference between that, again, assuming a $12 million construction breakdown, um, that just meant less, uh, less community program rooms um, that could go into a building. So instead of 21,500, it was 14,000 uh, square feet because the budget and some budget and then space were dedicated to the pool. So essentially for this option, we started with, well, how much would a new pool cost and how much space does it take? And then um, walk through the remainder of the budget and what could we um, possibly um, include in that program. So we do have the pool. Um, this pool, it is smaller than the current grub pool. This is just a starting point, um, but the um, shape of it and the proportion of it is different um, to allow for longer lap lanes for the people that do want to swim laps, as well as also making sure the pool could be subdivided for multi-purpose activities. We also would bring over some of the um, amenities and kind of features of the pool that um, are working really well, such as a no step entry um, and other efficiencies there. Um, but I don't think we're going to bring a hot tub over in this option. So apologies to those heavy advocates of that. Um, the pool also does need its own dedicated storage and mechanical room, which is reflected in that uh, top row of dark blue. Below that, um, because we were prioritizing the pool and the new construction, we had less square footage to work with um, in, the in this example of under the available budget. So our multi-purpose court got a little bit smaller. So it accommodates a high school um, basketball court instead of NBA basketball court. Uh, the fitness and weight room um, also what became a little bit smaller um, as well as you, there was a reduced quantity in community rooms, as well as our out of the box room, rooms that we had within the program. Finally, the support and back of house spaces, they're the same between strategy four um, and strategy three. Um, so those options remain the same. As we walk through those four options, we then went into um, you know, a larger group discussion uh, that started to answer these questions. You know, we started to ask, you know, is there a particular option that comes to the forefront? Are there options that no longer work for you? Um, are there strategies or differences that uh, people wanted to share or opportunities that they saw seeing these different um, strategies that they also want to share? Uh, we also um, ultimately got into what additional information did the community want us to start to research and bring forward um, to see at the next meeting, ultimately trying to get to um, what decisions can we make tonight about strategies that people liked or wanted us to pursue more versus um, strategies that, um, we, that they didn't want us to carry forward. I could say that there were, um, you know, we, we heard great things um, and we heard, you know, everyone, the joke was that everyone has an option five that's not up there. And that's what we're trying to get to in meeting number five is how do we find the next, re the next revisions of what um, a renovated 
uh, grub could look like or what a new construction grub could look like. Um, and as mentioned, um, we do have these next two meetings coming up um, on the uh, website, you will see a link to a survey link that outlines um, the handouts that were shared, which were those four strategies that we walked through. And then also it provides an opportunity for you to give your input um, uh, on what you think of the strategies, what's missing, what could be in, uh, what should be included or what additional um, kind of background information you want to see as well as give a preference if there was an option that you felt really came to the front or one that should be dropped off the list. And from there, um, you know, thank you again for sharing a little bit of your time with me to walk through the design strategies uh, for uh, Northside Community Recreation Center at Park um, uh, on this, you know, incredible site. Um, I look forward to seeing some of you uh, in February and definitely look forward to hearing some of uh, and reading some of the survey responses. Um, and with that, uh, again, like I said, thank you. And I look forward to the next time we meet.